Welcome back to The Face Off. You are listening to KXSC's The Face Off. KXSC right now is undergoing its fundraiser and doing this. We are doing two weeks of 24 hours of programming. You can find out more about the fundraiser at kxsc.org slash fundraiser. We have an overall goal of $15,000. We are so close to it. We have $13,330 raised so far. Not too much longer in this fundraiser, so please help us reach our goal. To find out more about the fundraiser, log on to kxsc.org slash fundraiser. The Florida Panthers, let's just be honest here, have had a very, very tough season. Seemingly everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for them. They are currently 13, 26, and 6 in the midst of a six-game losing streak. They have allowed the most goals in the National Hockey League at 162, 13 more than any other team in the league. They are the worst team in the entire NHL this season by far. As of this morning, nine roster players are out of the lineup. Christopher Stee got knee surgery in mid-March, out for the season. Ed Jovanovsky, hip surgery in mid-March, out for the season. Stephen Weiss, wrist surgery in early March, out for the season. Jose Theodore, tore his right groin in early March, out for the season. Dmitry Kulikov, who suffered an upper body injury in yesterday's game, he won't play the remainder of the season. Michael Caruso broke his wrist in late January, and he hasn't played since. Tyson Strackham, Peter Mueller, and Eric Gudbrunson all did not play Saturday's game against the Bruins. Peter Mueller did not play that game, however, for personal reasons. So, yes, you can blame injuries on this season for Florida. They, the Panthers are having to play a lot of young guys in the, in, in the games, and at times they've been grossly outmatched. Prime example, April 11th against the Winnipeg Jets. And in this game, it was pretty evident that it was starting to wear not only on the fans, but the broadcasters. The Panthers were losing this game 7-2 with less than eight minutes to go in the third period. The Panthers feed came back for a commercial with Panthers color commentator Bill Lindsay discussing Winnipeg fun facts. The seven facts Bill Lindsay brought up with the help of an on-screen graphic, mind you, were... Winnipeg, the Winnipeg Falcons were the first Olympic hockey, hockey champions, pardon me, in 1920. The slur, Winnipeg is the Slurpee capital of the world, serving 400,000 Slurpees per month. Winnipeg is the coldest city in North America with over 600,000 people living in it. Bobby Hole became the first millionaire hockey player in 1972 when he signed with the WHA's Winnipeg Jets. Winnie the Pooh is from Winnipeg. The first, Winnipeg is the first place to use crash test dummies. And Winnipeg is the location, excuse me, the, fir, the person who invented the cell phone is from Winnipeg. So yeah, those were the seven facts that were listed in, an, in on-screen graphics during the game when they came back from commercial. What wasn't listed in the graphic but was mentioned by Bill Lindsay later on was how all service was how nine, excuse me 911 service began in Winnipeg too. When play resumed, that's when the real fun started. Steve Goldstein, the play-by-play commentator for the Panthers on the TV feed, I should say, really wanted to know what made Winnipeg Slurpees different from the rest of the world. Lindsay and Goldstein then proceeded to discuss how Slurpees in Winnipeg were more dense than any other Slurpee in the world. Lindsay explained that there was there was. There wasn't as much air in Winnipeg Slurpees than other Slurpees, and that's what made them more dense. This is going on while the Panthers are playing. And the, the conversation drifted to Winnie the Pooh, with Goldstein commenting on how Winnie the Pooh wasn't real and questioned how he could possibly be from Winnipeg. According to Lindsay, and I, I was amazed at this too, a Winnipeg serviceman got a bear cub and called it the Winnipeg Bear, and then they shortened it to Winnie the Pooh. After hearing this, Goldstein remarked on how he believed Winnie the Pooh, the, how he believed the Winnie the Pooh story, but not necessarily the denser Slurpee theory by Lindsay. Goldstein also gave his theory on how 9-1 service started, people getting stuck in the snow. After Goldstein remarked on how he did not, pardon me here. <clears throat> Uh-oh. 
Uh, so pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. I do have no idea where my notes are. This is very embarrassing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea where I put these things. Uh, it might be in my backpack. I'm going to play some music while I find it. He was born in Big Beaver by the borderline. He started playing hockey by the time he was nine. His dad took the hose and froze the backyard. Little buddy dreamed he was Rocket Richard. He grew up big and he grew up tough. He saw himself scoring for the Wings or Canucks. But he wasn't that good with a puck. Buddy's real talent was beating people up. His heart wasn't in it, but the crowd ate it up. Through peewees and juniors and midgets and mites, he must have racked up more than 300 fights. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have found my notes. I sincerely apologize. It's extremely embarrassing on me to not have my stuff together. I promise to be more prepared next time. Anyway, so I will continue from where I left off, and frankly, this is not my best moment here. Okay, well, after Goldstein remarked how it did not start to get dark outside until 8.15 p.m., Lindsay brought up another fact about Winnipeg, saying that Winnipeg gets more sunshine in the winter with 385 hours of winter sunshine. After realizing that they went off topic or that went on a huge tangent, Goldstein said, okay, let's get back to the hockey game. But it didn't last long after Goldstein started questioning where Lindsay got all those facts. Lindsay said he Googled the facts And then Goldstein retorted, oh, if it's on the internet, it must be true. Goldstein and Lindsay were off topic for over four minutes of gameplay, but I don't blame them. They were not the only people who were bored during the game, as Jets fans were doing the wave during the 7-2 shellacking. Panthers fans who continued to watch the game late into the third period definitely appreciated Lindsay and Goldstein trying to lighten the mood of an otherwise dismal game. Not only did Lindsay and Goldstein inform... But they also gave us all laughs, and we can thank them for that. Coming up next, what happens when a broadcaster crosses a line? 